Hi, my name is Halsey Lion and today I'll be presenting you my first and what I hope to be a long series of tutorials for Outward. Because I didn't have time to really dedicate to the game when it was just released, I am now a little bit behind in terms of game knowledge. So today I'll only be sharing with you some early game knowledge that, if I knew when I started out, it would have made the game much easier. This is something you can probably find on your own in a rather short time, but who knows, maybe I've noticed something nobody else did. Emphasis on maybe. So let's begin. When you first wash up on the shores of Orai, you'll have to search the initial area to find a few things. A fishing harpoon here, a pickaxe there, some clothes, torches and bandages, all kinds of stuff. Keep an eye out for shiny. Oh, and tree trunks that look like this. They have loot. If you've picked up those rags, throw them on the ground before talking to this dude. He will take pity on your nakedness and give you some clothes as well. Now that you have two sets of rags, you can scrap one of them into cloth fragments by heading to the crafting menu. From here you click on the empty box and select the rags. With the newly acquired cloth fragments you can either craft bandages or a primitive shield which works very well with one-handed weapons such as the machete. For the shield you will also need some wood which you can harvest from any tree without even using an axe. Wood is also used for campfires and arrows among many other things. Now for some combat practice approach these hyenas. They finna be byenas real soon if you employ proper combat techniques. To be honest, when I fought these on my first playthrough, they wreckaged me. Now I can easily take on both of them because they're actually not that hard to beat. So select a weapon. The spear has a longer reach, the pickaxe hits harder and the machete is faster and can be used with a shield. Then try your best to fight them one by one because if you fight both of them, they will try to flank you and get around your block. If you're as much of a noob as I was, your dodge timing is gonna be off and you will find yourself trading blows with the hyenas as you attack. And when your health goes down, you will also see this icon here, which represents the fact that you are slowly bleeding out as a result of your injuries. Use a bandage to regain some health and stop the bleeding. But it's better to find other ways to keep your health up and only use bandages when you're bleeding severely. Anyway, if you defeat these hyenas, you will have some meat and hides which will be used later. But if you get defeated, don't worry, your friend Izan will carry your unconscious body back home. For those who don't know, in this game you don't actually die and your progress is constantly autosaved. So if you bite more than you can chew, you don't have the comfort of a reload, you will have to face the consequences of your defeat scenario. Then you can lick your wounds and continue your adventure. Now that the game's intro is over and you're back home, it's time to study our surroundings. This home has a few starter items such as better clothes and a small backpack which holds 25 extra pounds of weight. You also have a stash which can be used to store extra loot that you can't quite sell. And downstairs we also have a kitchen. This one can be used to cook advanced recipes such as berry jam or meat stew. But because we don't have any ingredients yet, we're gonna head out. As you do, you will be confronted by an angry mob demanding payment. More precisely, you have 5 days to pay 150 silver coins. Fail that and your home will be seized as well as everything you have in storage. You can get it back later, but you're gonna have to pay a lot more. But let's not worry about that now, because making that amount of money is trivial. What you need to worry about is preparing to go out there. The first area, Chersonis, is rather forgiving and it's a great starter zone which can be exploited for quite a sizable wealth. But before we head out we still need to prepare, as I've already said, so let's begin with that. First of all, explore Sierzo village and look for more shiny stuff. You can find all kinds of beginner weapons, a water skin and even schematics to craft yourself leather armor, which is the best you can get in your first 20 minutes. You want me to teach you how to do that? Ah, <sighs> fine, you win. So you've climbed up here, went to the table and picked the schematics up. When you open your inventory, you simply click these recipes and you'll learn the blueprint. Then, when you navigate to the crafting menu, you can click the recipe, and if you have the two hides required to craft it, you'll notice that they're present in the recipe, but the first item may be blacked out. It took me a while to figure this out, but that box is empty because it requires an outfit, such as the rags. You can click on manual recipe and then add your current clothes, as well as the hides. Doing this basically improves your garments to the leather robe, which offers you slightly more protection and 5 extra pockets. By the way, the recipe isn't required to craft this. It can be done right after you've defeated the two hyenas at the start. Simply combine your rags with the skins and you're done. Then you can sell the recipe once you find it. Got the armor? Good, now we need to cook. If you massacred those two hyenas, you should have some meat. Perhaps you also have some berries or some other random ingredient? 
Good, good. Now we need a pinch of salt. So if you've picked up this water skin, use it to gather some salt water from the sea. Make sure the water skin has this icon, because if it doesn't, then the water ain't salted. Empty it and try again. Now head to the kitchen, boil the salt water and cook the delicious meat stew with it. Not only is it filling, but it also helps regenerate your health for about 10 minutes. Always carry some of this with you and it'll help keep you on your feet in between fights. There's all kinds of foods with different effects which can range from giving you resistances to increasing your melee damage. Berries, for example, accelerate your stamina regeneration. If no meat stew is available, you may always boil an egg over a campfire and it will have a similar effect. Quick info about cooking. If you wish to create advanced recipes like the stew while you're out in the field, you're going to need to carry a cooking pot with you and place it over a lit campfire. Simplistic recipes with one ingredient, such as the steak or the boiled egg, can be made with just the campfire alone, which needs to be lit with flint and steel. One insanely useful recipe you're going to need to use is the grilled crab eye, which combined with a cloth fragment gives you a poison rag. Rub this on your weapon and take out the toughest of enemies. Before you head out, you'll have to speak to the gate guard. He will refuse to let you leave without teaching you a skill for whichever weapon you're currently using. If you're planning to use a different weapon, you can say no, switch to the weapon of your choice and then learn the skill. But what if you want to learn a skill for a weapon you don't yet have? Let's say you want to use the bow skill evasive shot, but you have no bow. What do you do? Well, the blacksmith happens to sell one. Buy it if that's the skill you want to learn from the guard. But I personally prefer the one-handed sword skill Puncture, which applies bleeding to enemies you hit, so I equip the machete before heading out. We could train additional skills, but we're kinda low on money, so we'll have to do that once we kill some bandits and get some loot to sell. But for now, there's only one more thing you need to do before heading outwards, and that is obtaining a proper backpack. You can buy it from Merchant Doran here in Sierzo for a mere 25 silver coins. Consider it an investment. This backpack also allows you to attach a lantern on it so you can have a hands-free light source. Kind of important if you want to use shields. I've also seen someone glitching his way to a huge backpack, I'll link his video in the description below. The final act of preparation is to put any bandages and medicine you have in your pockets because when a fight begins, the backpack will have to be dropped for mobility purposes. If a fight takes you a bit too far from where you dropped your bag and you can't find it anymore, don't worry. There's a GPS tracker placed on it and it shows in your compass. But if the fight gets too hard and you need to run, pick your bag up. And don't constantly sprint. Preserve your stamina and when danger gets close, bolt away. When you do run, use any fences, stones and other terrain elements to slow your enemies down and put as much distance between you and them as you can. Anyway, we've prepared enough, it's time to head out and kill something. But how? Good question. I guess I have to teach you some beginner combat techniques, huh? Alright then, listen up. The basis of combat is health and stamina. When health drops to zero, you will lose the fight and get a random defeat scenario. And when stamina drops to zero, you'll be unable to defend, dodge or attack, which will lead you to losing your health and then getting a defeat scenario. So carefully manage your stamina and try to not get hit. Pretty basic knowledge, eh? Well, it gets a little bit more complicated than that, because when you sustain injuries, your health can be permanently lowered. When I say permanently, I mean until you get some rest or drink some tea. Something similar happens to your stamina, it can get burnt out if you sprint and fight a lot, and it can be restored in similar fashion. Tea or sleep. You can purchase all kinds of teas from the town alchemist and you can use them in case you catch a cold or a hyena bite gets infected. Finally, you have this white bar here which represents your impact resistance. All enemies have it too and the more time someone is hit, the more this resistance gets lowered. It can quickly regenerate by stepping away from a flurry of strikes, but if it gets broken, you will get knocked back and eventually knocked down. If you hold down the block button, you will see the color change from white to golden and your impact resistance will increase, but you can still lose your footing and get floored. Luckily for you, this mechanic can be used to your advantage. I'll explain how momentarily. Before I do, we also need to discuss attacks. You have quick strikes and special attacks. These special moves change depending on the amount of quick strikes you've performed before. Let's take the sword as an example. If you start with a special attack, you launch forward with a stabbing motion. If you perform one prior attack, you'll do this, two quick strikes do this, and so on. 
In time you will gain full mastery over your weapon and know which combination works best against each particular enemy. Also, some weapons deal more damage to HP while others deal more impact damage and help unbalance your enemies faster. You can also upgrade most iron weapons with some cloth and predator bones to create a fanged variant which also inflicts severe bleeding on your enemies. So, how can we combine the attacks and the impact thingamajig? See this ability? It deals impact damage, and a very reliable 1v1 tactic I've found is this. Block, and then wait for your enemy to strike. As soon as that happens, kick it in its ugly mug and then unleash a combination of quick and special attacks. If you did everything correctly, you not only dealt heavy damage, but you also put your foe on the ground, ready to be stomped on by at least one more attack. This is enough to completely delete any solo, low-level enemy you encounter. If you face multiple foes though, you can try fighting them, but the wise choice is to run if you don't believe you can win. If possible, you can try separating them and taking them apart one by one, but that's a bit more difficult. You can always use a bow to thin the herd from afar before 1v1ing the strongest one of the bunch. Aim with right click, shoot by holding left click. Easy. If you get lucky enough to find tripwire traps, you can arm them with spikes and a variety of other pointy things. To deploy a trap, you can assign it to a quick slot, then simply press the quick button and deploy it in a place of your choosing with left click. If you defeat an enemy without triggering your trap, you can dismantle it and get the components back for later use. One other thing I've attempted to do to separate enemies is using the pearl birds to distract them. I first aggroed the bird, took it into an optimal position towards my enemies, injured it and prompted the bird to flee from me in their direction. While they were distracted and with their backs turned, I introduced them to the art of acupuncture. I then looted what remained. But this doesn't always work, sometimes the bird can die early and you're left fighting all the enemies at once. Rest in peace, little guy. One last piece of advice I have in regards to combat is this. Make use of any poison rags you have and use the bleeding attack if you're using a sword. These can decimate the strongest of enemies with damage over time effects. And if you're ever going to fight pistol shrimps, make sure you have plenty of arrows and an ability to dodge their ranged attacks. Using these beginner combat tactics saved my butt plenty of times and allowed me to amass plenty of silver to pay my debt. But you can pay this debt for free, I'll tell you how shortly. For now we need to head back to Sierzo village. You'll occasionally come across these road signs which tell you where certain landmarks are positioned in regards to the sign. This makes the map easier to navigate. Anyway, now that we're back in town, it's time to sell our loot and use the money to train up. Eto here will teach you some proper combat techniques such as the shield charge which deals heavy impact damage. A lot of the money you'll be making will be going towards the acquisition of new skills and gear to help you become stronger and stronger. But what about the debt? Well, didn't I tell you you can pay it off for free? See, once you've emptied your bags a little bit you can go outside again. But this time we'll use a different route, right across this bridge and into the basement of the lighthouse, then through a bunch of troglodytes and onto the beach. Bring a bandage with you because you'll have to help a fellow tribesman back on his feet. This deed earns you a tribal favor writ, which is an adequate substitute for the 150 coins you have to pay, but I've personally done this after I already made a payment. So I sold the writ to a trader and only got 45 silvers back. A fellow by the username made to make showed me how to do this while I streamed the game for the first time. I didn't find it out by myself. Last thing I want to say is about maintenance, both of your body and your gear. As I was saying when I discussed combat, the longer you exert yourself, the more you get burnt out. Your health won't regenerate fully and neither will your stamina. So you will have to rest. But when you do, you also have the option to repair your gear. Simply select how many hours will you rest, how many hours will you perform repairs, and if you're in the wilderness, how many hours will you guard to prevent an ambush. Bedrolls and tents can be deployed to help you rest in the wilderness and there's many types of these with different effects, which I will leave you to explore on your own because I've already talked about everything I wanted to and more. If I were to approach every subject in this game, I'd probably have a 10 hour long video, but that would take me at least a month to create. So once I obtain more knowledge about this game, I shall organize it into different tutorials and present them to you guys. But until then, I will have to say thank you for watching and I hope to see you next time. Goodbye.